This country is a great place if you're a vulture fund, a developer or a landlord, but it's not so great if you're working class. So here's 10 reasons a socialist Ireland would be better for working class people. Number one, ending the housing crisis. The housing crisis just isn't getting better, north or south. In the north, it's just been revealed that over 200 people have died while on the waiting list for public housing. Down south, there's 9,000 people homeless, over 2,000 of them children. And from hap to cost rental, this government of landlords is just pandering to developers and vulture funds. Should the biggest vulture fund landlord, Iris Rhea, a Canadian vulture, is talking about expanding out of Dublin into Limerick and Cork and other towns and cities around the country. They're already Ireland's biggest landlord and now they're going to get bigger. And while they're gobbling up homes, what working class couple or new family can afford to get a house? when you're being outbid by cash-rich vulture funds. Socialists would just nationalise the houses and flats belonging to the vultures. Just take them over and make them into public housing. Through the week it was revealed that there's still 90,000 empty homes around this country. Any home that's derelict over a certain period should just be taken over and given to a family that needs it. And a socialist plan for housing would involve a state construction company that wasn't run by some quango or some bureaucrats or developers. It would be run by construction workers themselves in consultation with communities about exactly what kind of housing they need. A socialist plan for housing would be an integrated plan for housing. You wouldn't build massive housing estates on the outskirts of a town with no shops and services, no schools or proper roads. In fact, no capitalist plan for housing is going to work. As long as you've got the profit motive at the heart of your plan and making money for developers and incentivizing vulture funds is at the heart of your plan, then you're never going to put people before profit. Number two, socialism would solve the problem of low wages and inequality. It would put the massive wealth of billionaires like Dennis O'Brien and Larry Goodman under public control. And then we'd vote on what we would do with that wealth. You could stop rampant inflation by just putting a cap on energy costs. You just put a cap on prices. Under socialism, working class people get the final say. So we just vote on what we think is a reasonable price for things. Workers in Ireland are more and more productive. But as productivity has been rising, wages have been stagnant and haven't kept up. We create a growing economic pie, but our share of it hasn't grown over the last two or three decades. Socialism isn't just about nationalising the big company. It's about putting the wealth of the rich and the wealth of these corporations under democratic control. Ordinary people would get a say in what happens to the wealth that ordinary people create. Number three, speaking about real democracy. We don't have much under this system. Every four years you get to vote for which party is going to lie to you and rip you off. The secret is when you vote to fill the doll full of TDs, that doesn't change the composition of one board of directors. Dennis O'Brien can still do what he wants with his money. Larry Goodman can still do what he wants with his money. The billionaire bosses can still do what they want. And they can use their massive wealth to corrupt the political system, to throw brown envelopes at TDs. So if you don't challenge capitalism and who controls the wealth, the political system will always be a puppet show, a muppet show under the control of the billionaire bosses. And the only way to stop that is socialism. Because socialism, by putting the wealth under the control of the working class, prevents that massive bribery and corruption from taking place. And any public representative under socialism would be put on the average wage. So you wouldn't have the likes of Leo Varadkar and Michal Martin with their wages higher than the President of America retiring with multiple pensions on their golden handshakes. That would end every public representative. Anyone that wanted to be a public representative would be on the average wage. But more than that, they'd be subject to recall. The people who elect a representative should be able to recall that representative. There'd be no more broken promises. You promise the people something as a public rep and you don't deliver, you're out. Number four, socialism will be better for women. Irish capitalism has let women down again and again and again. After the War of Independence, the state, the rich and the church 
formed an unholy alliance to keep working class people down and part of keeping the working class down was to brutalise women. They forced women into laundries but many women in this country didn't put up with that. They fought tooth and nail for change. But as long as nine counties don't even have a refuge for victims of the domestic violence, as long as the church controls education and our hospitals, as long as inequality traps many women in poverty, as long as the housing crisis traps women in homelessness, as long as the billionaires control the media and billionaire owned newspapers like The Sun put out sexist poison, pollute our society creating a toxic sexist atmosphere. For all those reasons, women need to fight for socialism. We would finally separate the church and state, end the housing crisis, end poverty, create a national network of free public creches so any woman that wants to take up work is free to do it. We could begin to educate a new generation of men and boys who understood what consent was. It would be a slow process and it might take generations. Socialism is the best bet for real women's liberation. Number five, if you want to solve climate change, you need socialism. Because under capitalism, even though it's the corporations doing the polluting. The likes of the Green Party, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are going to make me and you pay the price. They're going to push more pensioners into fuel poverty, despite the fact that two to three thousand people die every year because of fuel poverty. They're going to put carbon taxes on our back and they're going to leave the corporate polluters untouched. The only way you're going to get a truly just transition to a fossil fuel free economy is if you move to socialism and put the cost of that move to a fossil fuel free economy on the shoulders of the corporations. Capitalism is all about profit. Profit, profit, profit is God. They make their decisions based on profit. If something is profitable in the short term, they don't care if it destroys the planet in the long term. So as long as the profit motive is at the heart of our economy, and as long as we live under a capitalist economy, we're heading towards disaster. Number six, socialism would be better for rural Ireland. Look at the way small farmers are treated by billionaires like Larry Goodman. Imagine Larry Goodman's wealth was put under the control of assemblies of working class people who could democratically decide what to do with it. And in consultation with small farmers, they decided a plan for rural Ireland. Small farmers could transition away from unsustainable practices to sustainable practices that provided a better income and support for their families. But the tax haven economy also skews the whole of Ireland towards Dublin. Under socialism, you'd have a more thought out plan for rural development, integrating town and country, making sure that industries were spread throughout the country. Instead of privatising public transport, which sees unprofitable routes cut by private firms, You'd have a decent public transport system that served the whole country, including extending the rail network to places like Donegal. It's shameful that our rail network in the 1800s was more extensive and covered more parts of this country than our rail network presently does. And with neoliberalism and privatisation, outsourcing and the cutting down of public services, that's just going to get worse, not better. 7. Socialists are for a 32 county united Ireland. But by fighting for socialism and a united Ireland, hand in hand, you get a united Ireland that's not just the stitching together of two tax haven economies, of two corporate dominated economies, of two billionaire dominated economies. A tax haven economy where landlords, developers and vulture funds laughed all the way to the bank where working class people, whether in Derry, Belfast, Dublin, Cork or Limerick, would lose out. Number eight, the health service. I mean the health service has been at the centre of debate for the last two years because of the Covid pandemic. But in the first few weeks of the Covid pandemic, Varadkar and crew decided to throw millions every month to the private hospitals owned by the likes of O'Brien. We need an all Ireland NHS, where the planning and decision making isn't in the hands of overpaid bureaucrats like Paul Reid on his obscene 400 grand a year, but where nurses and doctors and staff on the front line of our health service get to decide plans for our health service.